Hey everybody, it's Dr. Mystical and happy Halloween. Blessed Samhain. Special live tarot readings tonight, uh, both for Halloween, but also for the birthday of an amazing system um, that we love here on Dr. Mystical, the gathering we love on Tarot Tuesday, we love on YouTube, we love everywhere. We just love the 40 servants. Today, is the birthday of the 40 servants and um, the creator Tommy Kelly from Adventures in Woo Woo um, is uh, you know he, he, every year faithful to uh, faithful to the birthday this year um, and it just happened to work out coincidentally I was planning to do um, the show he says you know hey look there's a great way for you can honor the servants do some free readings and friends here we are so happy Halloween blessed Samhain to everyone Michelle, I would love to give you a reading, absolutely. Um, so let me just write you down on the list. Uh, I want to thank everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody for their support on Tarot Tuesday and their support in the gathering. Uh, I've had a lot of fun with you uh, this week, and now we're just going to keep that going. Uh, this tonight, the kind of our night, right? This is our night, and we're going to keep this going with. <clears throat> some readings from the 40 servants. I do want to thank uh, my patrons from Patreon. So many great folks are over there uh, supporting the work that we do. This week, brand new uh, founding patron, uh, Tommy Kelly of uh, the 40 servants joined as one of our uh, one of our founding patrons. So thank you very much to Tommy uh, for his support of the work and magic that we do and bring giving us the system. So uh, let's not belabor the readings because as much as I would love to spend all night with you, friends, sometimes we got to get up in the morning and get our things going on. So let's do some readings, have some fun. Happy Halloween list. I don't know what that means. Happy Halloween to the four. Happy birthday to the 40 servants. It's going well, Zach. Hello, Gwen. How are you? Hello, Cheryl. Um, how are you? Oh, I see what we're saying, Cheryl. I see you're saying, can I be added to the list? Absolutely can. Why couldn't you? Absolutely. All right, Cheryl, we've got you. Patty with an I, I've got you. Uh, I am wearing, I, of course I'm wearing PJ bottoms tonight, always, but what would they be? Hint, it's not as exciting as you think it is. All right, Zach, I've got you. Hey, Claudia, how are you? Claudia is going to get out of the list. Uh, she selflessly gives us uh, her skills as a moderator each week and never, ever asks for reading. But it's it's Samhain, it's Halloween, it's the birthday of the servants. We, we, we're we going to give them out. We're going to give readings around. Uh, I'm so glad. Um, Jennifer Rose, absolutely. Renee, I saw you pop on and ask for one. Absolutely, we'll get you a reading as well. Um, sure, Teresa. Gwen, absolutely. Gwen, also one of our patrons and our one of our founding patrons. Thank you for that. Always, always wonderful. Hey, Stephanie CC, I would love to give you a reading. Hello, Amy. How are you? Hey, Lakin. How are you? Sure, Krista. I'll add you to the list as well. I got you. On, I got you. Sure, I figured it out. Happy Halloween, Amy. Happy Halloween for you. Uh, Lakin, absolutely, we'll get you a, a card. No strength cards in this deck, Lakin. You're going to have to find. <laughs> they are plain blue. They are plain, plain blue jammies. Not as exciting as you all thought they would be. <laughs> you can get a reading, Renee. I got you on the list already. Zach's up. The hot tub kid's up there somewhere. Um. Well, I don't know who's with you tonight. Let's find out which ones. Hey, Cisco, uh, happy Halloween. Blesses out went to you as well. Hey, Ricky, how are you? Blesses out went to you. Hey, Joe, uh, we'll add Joe to the list as well. Joe always comes on a little bit late, never quite makes the list. All right, friends, so if you want a reading, oops, there was a reading in there. Um, um, if you want a reading, absolutely just let me know. Put it in the comments. I'll add you to the list. Uh, we would be happy to. Let me get a drink and let's get on 
uh, with the 40 servants. So if you want a reading, just let me know. Drop it in the comments. I did add you. I did add you, Joe. Hey, hello, Melody. Melody, also one of our founding patrons. Thank you for that on being in there the founding patron actually she'll always be the found the founding patron sam i've added you ginger i'll add you ginger um hello diane how are you hello zach i got you melody baby i got you i got you i'll never i, I won't ever i won't miss you all right So let's have a little fun, shall we? Let's read from the 40 servants. Uh, let's read from the 40 servants. You've had zero truckers for years. So have we. We didn't even have to be here to know we weren't going to get any. Um, but we fortunately have uh, some friends that we went with. So let's take a look. Let's go with, uh, we're going to do, here's my list. Just this is the list that I have so far. A little hard to see in the light. There it is. Uh, Michelle T., Cheryl, Patty, Zach, Claudia, Jennifer Rose, Renee, Teresa, Gwen, Stephanie, CC, Krista, Lake, and Joe, Melody, Sam, MC, Ginger. That's who I have. Oh, always, it's my pleasure. I did grab you, Gwen. <laughs> All right. All right, Michelle T., let's take a look here at uh, the servants for you. So again, if you're not familiar with the 40 servants, 40 servants created is a sigil servant magic divination system uh, created by Adventures in Woo Woo. The link to the deck is in the show description. This is not an affiliate link. Um, it's through, uh, you can get it directly from Adventures in Woo Woo and the Game Crafter. Um, even if there were an affiliate link for it, I wouldn't do that. Um, I really kind of, I, I really love this system a lot. And as it turns out, there's kind of a birthday sale. So if this is a deck that you've always wanted um, or after the show you're kind of really interested in, this is probably the time to get that. It usually goes on sale about this time of year uh, for a percentage off. In this case, this year it's 25% off. Uh, and that's something that Tommy does um, for folks that want to get involved with the 40 servants and there's lots of information about how to use this um, in his community and the work that he does and the magic that he does if you own this deck I would encourage you to become a patron of Tommy's as well on patreon lots of good things lot overwhelmingly good things puts me to shame good things going on on patreon so support Tommy with purchasing the deck um, and everything else. All right, Michelle T., your servant here is the librarian. And as we go through the readings, I'll tell you how to use this system a little bit for yourself. And I'll also kind of be telling a little bit about how I came to it over time. So the librarian is one of the servants. This up here is the sigil. So when I give you your reading, write the sigil down on something. This is how we're going to activate the servant in our life. And the librarian is a servant. She comes to us to help us <clears throat> do, do the research, find the knowledge, seek the information, right? What, a, what you would think a librarian would do, which again is kind of part of the beauty of this system is that it really fits kind of intuitively in what you do. And so the librarian kind of as a servant is going to help you to do your research. It's going to help you to dig deep. It's going to help you to get to the truth of the knowledge that you're looking for and not kind of at this superficial level which might be persuasion or might be influenced by other people the librarian really is about research and really about knowledge so michelle t if you've kind of been dealing with an issue for a while and you're not sure where that's going to take you the librarian is going to help you find the true real information so stop seeking it in all these other places, use the sigil, write it down on the work you're doing, put it in the place where you're doing your research. And to activate this, this servant, you just simply say, I'd like for the librarian to come forward and help me. Now, friends, for those of you who know the 40 servants, you need to know too, you already know this, but you need to, do, to thank the servants for their work when they're done in some sort of a public fashion. <laughs> we all need a hot tub in our life, Cheryl, believe me. 
Zach's hot tub is sketchy. <laughs> Hello, Diane. How are you? <laughs> All right. Hello, Nicole. How are you? Oh, yay. Uh, hey, Ashley, how are you? I can add you to the list. Absolutely. I'm just catching up with comments, guys, and then I'll move on to the next reading, which was for Cheryl. Just let me catch up on some comments. I mean, it, right, obviously. All right, thank you. Well, maybe somebody is up there, Jennifer. I don't know. Um, no snow this year. It was miserable here, too. It was like 90, like 85% humidity. It's hot. It's hot here in the jungle. All right. Ashley, you got on the list. I put you on the list. Shayla, I've got you as well. Hey, Jennifer, how are you? Right, I know, Melody, right? Like the hot tub, really, Melody, sometimes we just got to tell Zach, cool it with the hot tub already. All right, so. All right, Beverly Lee, I've got you. All right, Patty's in for the hot tub, Zach. You got me. <laughs> You hooked one. You're hooked, Patty. Sorry. All right. We apologize right up the front. I'm sure the hot tub is fine and platonic. All right. All right, Cheryl, let's read for you. Let's figure out what servant is there for you tonight. <laughs> I'm awesome, Nicole. I'm awesome. All right, Cheryl, here we go. The levitator, the levitator. Cheryl, what does the levitator kind of say to you? Just kind of say it out loud for you right now uh, while you're reading it. So here's your sigil, little kind of floating stick figure dude, right? And here's the levitator. The levitator is a servant comes to you right now, Cheryl, because this is a time in your life where you kind of need to rise above the bullshit, right? You kind of need to be above. The levitator allows us to kind of rise up, see things from a different perspective. It brings us up out of the drama. It brings us up out of the details. It brings us up out of the kind of the quagmire and the bullshit of situations that are kind of going on in our life. It gives us the kind of peaceful distance we need to get our thoughts in order, to be able to kind of navigate that situation, but also kind of to protect ourselves, right? To get, um, get out of this bullshit, get out of this quagmire, because you might not need to be there, but you're really not going to know that until we've kind of levitated above. And so that is what this servant does for you. That's the servant. So there's the sigil. Write the sigil down. I've got to get back to doing some sigil magic with you, my friends. I was looking back on the year and realizing we did some sigils at the beginning of the year. I haven't really done much sigil magic since. And I should. <laughs> <laughs> Melody says, Melody says, vodka? Really? <laughs> All right, Patty with an I, this one's for you. And it is the devil. It is the devil. So the devil here um, is not the devil, the devil of kind of Judeo-Christian lore of goods and evils, right? So the devil here really is kind of about, it still has the kind of, for me, this always has kind of the same connotation as the rider weight. Um, the devil is about bad choices. The devil is about um, a, more of a, a recognition of bad choices, a recognition of things that aren't good for us, a recognition of some kind of those, those things that those little kind of, those little negativities, those little devils, so not the devil, a devil, little devil, little D devil, right? The little devils of our life that kind of hold us back and don't allow us to succeed. So Patty, maybe for you right now, the devil's kind of coming for you as a servant. There's your sigil right there coming to you as a servant to kind of identify a habit that you need to work on, that you need to improve. Maybe it's getting into strange Zach's, not Z Zach's strange hot tub of fun, not strange Zach, but Zach's strange hot tub of fun. Maybe that's the devil that we're working on. I don't know. 
but some sort of a little habit, some sort of a thing, some sort of a kind of a, a self-indulgence or a, self, a bit of self-loathing or some activity behavior that you take upon yourself that is kind of a bad choice. You can see um, if you look, right, how do I, how do I get there? Right there. There's a truck. <laughs> I just, I just caught the truck. Um, so, so that's what the devil is for you, right? It's kind of identifying these small habits, these little indulgences, these, these restrictions you put upon yourself to kind of lighten those up. So we ask the devil for, you know, if we've been kind of um, not taking care of ourselves, we can ask the devil for help with that. Um, if we've been um, a little bit out of pocket lately or out of sorts because we've been maybe eating too much candy, whatever, you can ask the devil for help. And this brings us to Zach and his strange hot tub of fun. <laughs> Stephanie's easy. You're getting that devil. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, so, so it is strange, Zach, strange hot to a phone. All right, Zach, same thing here. We just saw the levitator a little bit earlier because um, there's only been three readings, but we saw it a little bit earlier. So the, the levitator, Zach, again, kind of rising above the bullshit. There's your sigil. Write it down. And so what the levitator does, again, it kind of gives us a distance. It raises us up. It lets us see the playing field. And I think for you, Zach, that's really kind of the message is you need to be able to see the playing field from a better vantage point that you're kind of down, like kind of headlong into it. And I get a sense of struggle, um, but you're not able to see the strategies at work. You're not able to see the plays coming to existence. You're not able to see how you're being played. So the levitator is going to give you that kind of distance, that peace, rise you above, and kind of allow you to see things from a different vantage point that for you right now is going to be a little bit more clear. So this is something that you need to help yourself with. Yeah, this is one of my faves too. And I'm even using my very first deck. I, you can't really tell. Let me see. It is right there is the deluxe edition of the deck which includes um, some additional cards uh, called the four devils which are not part of the servants but they are um, part of this they are a different system that are it's often confused and so um, and I'm probably gonna get another deck because they've upgraded the quality of the cards and, you know, I'm a sucker for the 40 servants, kids. I'm a sucker for them. All right. Oh, I'm glad, Penny. I'm glad. All right. This brings us to Claudia, our moderator extraordinaire. And it is the giver, the giver. So the giver is one of these kind of really amazing cards, right? And and no more perfect card for Claudia, right, in this, this because she's such a great moderator. She gets the community going. She keeps things in line. Um, she gives of herself very freely, and that's what the giver does. The giver uh, recognizes the amazingness that they have in their life. They recognize the kind of divine, the kind of divine gifts that they've been given. We can see the winged character here. We can see them holding a ball of light. But the giver doesn't just recognize the amazing gifts that they have. The giver gives generously in the right places, and so it's not just about willy nilly giving. But it's about, for you right now, Claudia, about knowing how to be generous and knowing where to be the most generous, where your generosity has um, the most impact on someone else's life. Yes, yours, but also someone else's life. So the giver is kind of a recognition of the amazing things going on for you and your ability to kind of pay that forward or pay that back to others. Your ability to kind of give to others to help them in ways that will help them the most. The giver app gives us a lens by which we can kind of see that. So the sigil, oftentimes, when, especially when we're trying to be generous, we're trying to give the most, the giver helps us to see how we can do that best and how we can do that often and generously. All right. That's for you. All right, Jennifer Rose, who's got some paranormal things going on in her house. 
Do -do 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 -do. Oh, I'm so happy to give it to you, Cheryl. That's my pleasure. Sure, Robin. When did it come? When did it get to this kind of list stuff? All right. All right, hang on. I got an itchy eye. Oh, I had salt on my finger. Yay. Yay for me. <laughs> All right. So this takes us to Jennifer Rose. Jennifer Rose, and it is the planet. The planet. So there's your sigil right there at the top. It's a circle with four dots around it in the kind of the compass directions, right? And what the planet kind of helps us to recognize is um, it, it kind of, it, it's similar to the levitator in that it puts things in perspective. It puts things in perspective. So the planet really is kind of about seeing that you're part of a larger system. So it's the planet to some degree is about, a little bit about kind of breaking out of your little bubble, your little world, and seeing that you're part of a greater collective. You're part of a society. You're part of a planet. And so that's what the planet is here to help you do. So if you've been feeling like your world's kind of shrinking, you've been feeling a little bit like um, you're, you haven't kind of been able to uh, that you're losing some perspective. You may be feeling a little bit more selfish lately or not really knowing how to engage with other groups or kind of seeing the world in a different perspective. Maybe you're maybe you're reaching some point of place of dissonance in your life. The planet's going to help you gain that perspective. Kind of recognize where you are. All right, so this brings us to Renee. Right, Renee, my dear. And then Teresa, Gwen, Stephanie, Krista, others after that. Let me catch up. Let me catch up. Well, there you go. The giver is just your your spirit servant, right? Just your spirit animal. All right. I got you, Robin. I added you to the list. All right, friends. You're probably going to see my dog walk behind me. There he is. See him? <laughs> Let me just tell you, the magic smudge, the mystical smudge does not give up. He, does, he has no fucks to give. He will walk right on this show. He does not care. He just does not care. It's not his place to lay down over there. All right, Renee, this one's for you, and it's the monk. It's the monk. Oh, I like the monk. I like the monk. The monk is, is about simplicity. The monk is about um, being authentic and simple and quiet and introspect, right? The monk talks about kind of leaning your life down to its bare essentials. It's um, getting you out of the rat race. It's getting you out of the keeping up with the Joneses. It's getting you out of the kind of wanting for the things uh, that others may have um, because you have them, right? And that's kind of what this becomes. You acquire a thing and then you need a more of a thing and you need more of a thing and you need more of a thing. And so the monk helps to break this cycle. The monk helps us to look at our life and see what it is at its core. What are the things that are essential to the life that we lead, to our happiness more importantly. And so for you, Renee, right now is the monk. And the monk is, this is kind of like the monk's back. I always see this as the monk kind of turned in prayer. The monk's back with the monk's head kind of bowed a little bit. That's how I see the sigil. And so we asked the monk to come to us to kind of help us to make the choices we need to make with some regard to simplicity in our life. <clears throat> so hopefully that makes sense for you, Renee. Teresa, let's read for you for a bit, shall we? Shuffle them up, cut them. Teresa, what's going on for you? Ooh, the opposer. All right. Who in the group has ever used the opposer, consulted with me, and gotten the opposer? The opposer. <laughs> All right. The opposer. Sorry. Um, sure, Lori, I'll add you to the list. Better be on the list than off the list. So there we go. All right. So Teresa, the opposer, 
is an amazingly powerful servant and a servant that I unfortunately have a, a, have had a lot of cause to use um, in in kind of both in past, like the distant past and the recent past. So the opposer does two different things for us. The first thing, and I think this has come up in several readings over the last couple of months with you, but the opposer is here to identify the forces, people, and situations that are opposing you in your life. Now, we're not talking about things that hold you back. I mean, we are, but we're not. Like, it's not about, it's not about restricting you. It is legitimately about stopping you. It's about stopping your progress, stopping your forward progression, stopping your success. The ram's horn, stop. The opposer identifies these people. So we ask the opposer to say, you know, we get this inkling in our brains. We're like, something is working against me here. Something is not right, right? Something's working against me. And so we don't know what it is. So the opposer helps to identify it. Now, the other thing the opposer does is it keeps these mother at bay. It keeps them at bay. It puts them in their place and it keeps them out of your way. And that, friends, that's how I prefer to use the opposer. So for Teresa, I think right now you need to kind of identify them, use the opposer to do that. Thank you, opposer, for that. And then hold them at bay. Thank you, opposer, for doing that. I have legitimately written the opposer sigil over a map of someone's home and their office. And it works. I'm not saying that's the reason that guy hasn't come out of his house in a year. I'm just saying I did it. <laughs> and thank you very much, opposer, for your help. All right. So one of my favorite oppos one of my favorite servants to use uh, for a little bit of the darker edge, right? A little bit of the darker edge. All right. So oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Hello from the UK, Melanie. Yes, you do use the opposer frequently. Hey, Kat, how are you? Is there air movement in there? I'm sorry. What, like in my house? Yeah, there's the air conditioners on. And so you'll see things kind of moving around. The air conditioners are kind of right directly above me, and they kind of ride the ceiling. And so right behind me here is a ceiling fan. All right. Trick or treat, trick or treat, Kat. Absolutely. Hey, Kathy, happy Halloween to you as well. Blessed Sawin. Uh, yeah, it's the air conditioning. I'm glad, I'm glad. It's the air conditioning. See that little box of tissues over there? I sit right, that's kind of my seat right there. And uh, it is forever and ever and ever colder than the rest of the house. I'm doing awesome. All right, let's get to Gwen, shall we? Gwen, here we go. It is the messenger. Oh, I like the messenger as well. It's a little solemn, uh, but I like the messenger. So Gwen, maybe for you, you just haven't been getting the message. Maybe it hasn't been as clear. Maybe it's been a little bit quiet. But the ravens, the crows keep coming, and you just aren't paying attention to the message. So there's the sigil. Notice it's a little bit different, right? So make sure you pay attention to the kind of crooks and curves and stuff, right? So the messenger comes to you, um, Gwen, really to highlight or to help you to hear or see the messages that you've been getting and have been missing. So... Um, you're getting signals, you're getting messages, you're getting direction, you're getting guidance, but you're not necessarily adhering to that because you're not hearing it. You don't see it, you don't hear it, you can't act upon it. And that's what the messenger helps us do. The messenger comes to us at a time where we're just ignoring spirit or just not paying careful enough attention to the details. The messenger helps us to see that and hear it. You'd think that the messenger goes the other way to clarify our message. There's a different servant for that. This messenger is inbound. Stephanie CC, you're up next. Should I just not shuffle them and just pull the devil for you? Yeah, Melanie, I will add to the list. Absolutely. 
course, better to be on the list than off the list, right? Absolutely. That's the good intention. To be on the list is the good intention. All right, Stephanie CC, here we go. Oh, goodness gracious. Woo, don't look, kids. It's body. All right, kids, it's the carnal. If you're, I should have probably warned you. Um, this is better than, this is way better than the devil, devil, Stephanie. Although maybe you need a little bit of devil too. All right, so the carnal is legitimately the carnal, lustful, physical side of love. Carnal, and maybe not even love, maybe just lust, right? The carnal is really about the physicality of sex, sexuality, intimacy. It is about kind of, it is kind of about pouring on the heat and the intensity in that arena of your life. You can use it to activate a date night. You can use it to activate all sorts of things. The carnal as a servant really comes to kind of make these things happen. Now, the carnal has a kind of a card that I would probably call a pairing card called the lovers. You don't have to use them together, but the lovers is kind of the the more kind of um, the more kind of uh, emotional, mental, spiritual intimacy side of the carnal, right? So maybe for you right now, Stephanie CC, you need to throw down a little bit. You need to get make the walls melt. So use the carnal for that. Thank the carnal when it's done, if you can. Which if you can't right away, that's a good sign. Uh, but do it eventually. Unfortunately, I see a lot of people use the carnal for kind of, kind of. I don't say bullshit reasons, but they use it in kind of this grossy, disgusting kind of way. Kind of like I had a first date last night. Thank you, carnal, for making that worth it. That's that's juvenile. Don't do that shit. I mean, use the carnal any way you want. Who am I to tell you what your magic is? Just be cool. Don't be a dick. That wasn't to you, Stephanie. That was to all those jokers who say that stuff. Oh, first date. Thanks, Colonel. And whatever. I don't know. What am I to say? But Stephanie, for you, the Colonel, good news for you. I feel like that's been coming up for you for a while. Like, if I think back on the readings, if I remember them correctly, and I remember kind of what spirit, I hear what spirits tell me, I feel like this has been coming for you for a while. There's something, yeah. Well, I won't go into it. We're in, we're in polite company. I won't go into it. Uh, we do have a list of the sigils in uh, in the gathering group for our for our group. Yes, <laughs> you're welcome, Melanie. It's my pleasure to have you on the list. Uh, yeah, you can have guardians around you if even if they're not family. They don't even have to be real people. Hey, Jennifer K. I can add you to the list as well. All right. <laughs> She's like, oh, I got to go. Oh, you didn't check out. Come on. You, come on. You're an adult. You can, <laughs> you can handle a little, you can handle a little bit of sexy time, Stephanie. All right, here we go. All right, Krista, this one's for you and it is the saint. So interestingly, um, and you can activate the servants any way you want, but um, Adventures in Woo Woo, Tommy Kelly has a ritual, uh, ritual activation. All of these things start here with the saint. Um, the saint is a servant for you. So there's the sigil. Uh, and for you, Krista, the saint is here to help you find the experts. Spirit's kind of whispering to me about you trying to figure it all out on your own. You're using Google to figure out whether, you know, whether there's, you know, extradition from this country or whatever it is you're working on. Um, the saint is here. Oh, all right. I hear you whistling my ear. All right. All right, the saint is here to tell you to stop doing shit on your own and start to find the the correct advisors that you need for this problem that you're dealing with. So even if it is as simple as I think I can plumb my own house or fix the plumbing, the saint's going to put you in touch with a good plumber. If it's I think I can handle this legal battle myself, the saint's going to put you in touch with a good lawyer. If it's I need guidance from a higher authority, the saint's going to activate that higher authority. They're going to kind of do the vetting work for you so you don't have to work about it. So that's the saint. So if you're kind of dallying around with trying to figure it out yourself, this DIY thing that you're doing, stop, use the saint, 
get the right help, pay the price, it'll be worth it. And then, of course, think. I know, I know you're kidding, I know you're kidding. No, Joe, you've not missed yours. Yours is coming. Well, thanks, Kat. I made this shirt a while back. I must have an AF theme. All right, Ginger. Yeah, Ginger, you're up there. You're down on the list a little bit. All right. This brings us to Lakin, and then Joe, and then Melody, and then Sam, and then others after that, friends. So let's get going here with Lakin, shall we? Let's see what Lakin gets. What will it be? Ooh, the moon, the moon. Oh, Lakin, the moon. The moon here works a lot like the moon works in the Rider Waite. There's your sigil. The moon is about illusions. And the moon is about kind of you being able to see the see that they are illusions um, and be able to kind of see the truth of those illusions, right? So remember that the moon is the reflection of the sun. Sun being clarity, the moon being reflected light. And sometimes we see our eyes play tricks on us in the night. They play tricks on us in the moonlight. And so the moon is reflected light. Yes, we can see things. No, they're not always clear. So this is kind of, this is the servant that you need right now to clarify some situations that you're dealing with. Either you're being told a thing that isn't true, or you're being told a thing that's half true, or you're being told a thing that's three quarters true, right? The illusion, it's the illusionary, it's the illusion, kind of the illusion part that's what you need to see. You need to see that kind of component that's being covered up. Hey, Crystal, how are you? I'm sure you've been busy, man. Busy is good, right? Keeps you out of trouble. Linda, I can add you to the list. Absolutely. You know the drill. Better to be on the list than off the list. So if you want to be on the list, if you've been watching and you want to be on the list and you, you're not sure if you are, this is the time to say something to me. All right, Joe, here we go. It's the eye. The all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye. Um, so the eye is about vision, Joe. The eye is about vision. So we there's another card in here called the seer. That's about the seer is about our intuition. The eye, I want you to see the eye as almost literally kind of seeing between the lines, right? The all-seeing eye. There's the sigil. The all-seeing eye. And so, Joe, similar to the moon, but it's not about illusions. It's just about perspective. It's about kind of having our field narrowed here and the eye winding it out. So the eye is going to help us see the spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, all the aspects of the thing that we're trying to understand. The eye is going to help us kind of see between the lines, right? See between the things. Read the, read the subtext. Read the full context of what's happening. And so, Joe, for you right now, I want you to, or Spirit kind of wants you to use the eye to help you understand that situation to kind of, to, so that you're more kind of fully aware of the things that are going on. And probably you're going a little bit bananas trying to figure it out. All right. Melody, my dear. Who is a wonderful supporter of the show and founding patron. Thank you for that. Thank you for your generosity of spirit. Here we go, Melody, for you. It is the mother. Congratulations, Melody. You're pregnant. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I don't do that in readings. <laughs> I should never ask a medium if you're pregnant because he'll be a jackass and tell a joke like that. No, the mother is about nurturing. The mother is about caretaking. The mother is about kind of um, tapping into those things. Now, the mother kind of works in two different ways, Melody. 
Um, one is that the mother can help us to um, to tap into our caring, nurturing side. I don't think that's really what's going on for you. I think the other side of the mother is the kind of the other thing of the mother that's really the reason you need the servant, and that is that you need a little bit of taking care of, you need a little bit of nurturing, you need a little bit of mother's love, right? The world's mother love, the kind of the universal mother's love. So maybe that's from your mom, but maybe it's also just from the universe. So the mother is a servant and the mother is a sigil. You can kind of see how the sigil follows the art here. The mother as is, is a sigil and, and as a servant in your life helps to create a space where you can feel nurtured, you can feel loved, you can feel supported, and you can kind of feel like you're safe in a place where you can kind of let go a little bit and allow yourself to kind of relax into the kind of comfort and warmth of the mother. So your mother, the universal mother, whatever that might be. So we ask the servant to help us with that regard. Um, and I've used the mother in all kinds of different ways. Uh, I've used the mother to help sell my house. Um, I've used the mother to keep my house safe. Um, warm, happy. Uh, I use the mother on my kids' doorways um, in their rooms so that they're always kind of, they're always basked in the mother's love and the mother's warmth and and nurture and guidance. Um, so I, you know, I use the mother in a lot of different ways, um, probably ways that are a little outside the intention, but it's my magic and do what I want. Oh my gosh, 20 comments. Hang on, my friends. Hang on, my friends. Oh, I'm sorry, Linda. That's no fun. Linda is also on the list. She's also one of our amazing, amazing patrons. Thank you for that. And so is Lakin. I didn't mean to forget you, Lake, and Lakin is also one of our amazing patrons. Um, Crystal, you are right to ask. All right, there you go. You're on the list now. And I might get to you before I get to you, so that'll be good. <laughs> oh, Melanie, you better ask the spirits to put them back. <laughs> Melody says, no, that is physically, medically impossible. Uh, all right, no chance. <laughs> oh, isn't that nice, Melody? That's nice. I guess you do need your mom's love. All right, perfect. That's perfect. What a perfect reading. I like that a lot for you, Melody. Good for you. All right, Sam, let's get to you. Let's get to you. All right, The Lovers. I told you there's another card out there, Sam, called The Lovers. I didn't tell you, but I told everybody. All right, so there's The Lovers. So we already saw the carnal tonight for Stephanie CC, who has left the show. Stephanie CC has left the chat, and uh, she is getting busy with the carnal, figuring that out. The Lovers is the other side of this. The Lovers is, um, the lovers is that kind of, right, it's, uh, look at the image, right? It's cuddling after, right? It's that safety of being completely vulnerable, completely intimate with somebody, the emotional, the spiritual, the mental, the kind of the, just the, this, that kind of that wrapped and bathed in love uh, magic that you need, that place where you can go, that you can kind of just melt into that person and just be one in that place. And so that's what the lovers is for you right now, Sam. You need that kind of, this might be um, people use the lovers for all kinds of reasons. It might be to improve a relationship. It might be to help the relationship blossom from a place that's already good. Um, the lovers can also be a place to repair relationships um, or just kind of a, just kind of a way for you to kind of access that need in your life, right? So that's what the lovers is for you, Sam. Just uh, a need for you to kind of recapture that sense of self, that sense of uh, vulnerable intimacy with a person, that complete oneness. Oh, 
Oh no, Melanie. I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't speak clearly enough. That card was melody, but if you identified with the spirit, that brings us to an interesting talking point. And that is that while we are reading these things for divination purposes, you can use the servants for anything that you want at any time in your life. That's the beauty of the servants as a magic system. You don't have to wait and pull a card and see what's going on. You can go to the servants and ask for them to help you. And that's kind of my story, right? That's kind of how I came to this place. Um, I was at a show in Cleveland, a good friend of mine, Anna, um, who we've can, we've seen in other places um, around the show. Um, she does her own kind of divination dice readings and all sorts of things. Um, she came up to me at the show and she said, Doc, you got to check these cards out. You got to check the system out. It's called 40 Servants. I don't have them here at the show, but you got to, got to see them. And I was like, yes, like I totally will. It's a busy show. We chatted back and forth, her and her, her and her really just wonderful husband, uh, back and forth. But I'm telling you, I went back to the hotel that night and I had dreams about the servants. I hadn't seen them. It was busy. I hadn't Googled them. I just had dreams of these servants, dreams of these people coming to me and helping me. And so I worked the next day, didn't, again, didn't really have much of a chance to, to, to look at them or at all. Uh, drove back from Cleveland uh, that night um, with my friend Reverend Kayla and my daughter in the car and got home and went on and checked out the cards the next day. Immediately fell in love. It was right around Halloween. Picked up the deck around for its birthday special. Um, could not, like legitimately could not wait. They were coming to me in full images in my dreams and meditations. Like it was, it was insane. And by the time the deck came, just a week or so later, um, I kind of already fully knew these servants. I opened the deck. They were familiar friends. I went through the ritual as the creator intended, although you don't have to. Um, um, but I'm telling you, that's kind of my story. And now I use the servants in my own magic. So I don't wait for them. So Melanie, if you got something from Melody's reading, that is awesome. You can use any, all, or none of the servants at your leisure. But you are on the list just a few doors down. You're welcome, Sam. It's my pleasure. Ginger, my dear, what do we got for you? The chaste. <laughs> If the carnal is about stripping down and getting busy, the chaste is not. <laughs> um, I'm not saying they're opposites, uh, Ginger. I'm just saying they're opposites. Uh, I'm not saying they're opposites, but the chaste is about the chaste is about uh, making good choices, um, making good choices, and maybe about you know slowing down some of the. Um, some of the lustfulness, some of the kind of, it doesn't have to be about sexualness, sexuality, sex, things like that. It could very well be about some other kind of things that are going on. So we can often use the devil and the chaste in, in, together, um, which is a weird, weird, weird servant combination, the devil and a nun. Um, so devil and a nun walk into a bar. All right. So the chaste can be just about kind of making better choices, Right. Yes, slowing down some of the, can be slowing down some of the sexuality and sexualness of your life, but it also could be kind of, it all, it kind of what that kind of represents, those kind of things that we do that are, that can kind of become a little bit obsessive, um, a little bit kind of, they, they can occupy all of our mind. We can use the chase for anything. We could use the chase to knock down some of the video game time. We could use the chase to knock down some of the drinking we do, we could do knock it down some of the time we spend on Facebook. We need to chase for lots of things. But I think what you need to aim it at is kind of that thing that's kind of taking time away from other things. You always kind of find yourself going back to this bad habit that's a little bit obsessive. And I have used the chase in my own magic as well every once in a while. Well, not my magic. 
but magic for others. It was meant to be with me. I agree. And, uh, <laughs> good night, Gwen. Thank you very much for being on. Thank you for being a patron of our community. I appreciate you so much. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Patty and Ginger are compadres, and they got the devil and the chaste ladies. I advise you not to go to Strange Zach's Strange Hot Tub Fun. <laughs> you are being warned by the cards. <laughs> hey, Joe, have a good night. Sleep well, my friend. Um, I was going to tell another story, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. Oh, the other story. Yeah, I mean, the deck, the system really has become... Um, a, a foundational cornerstone to my magic and the work that I'm doing. Um, but also, and I think probably what I get most out of this is that the creator of this system is just ultra generous. He's generous of spirit. He's generous with his knowledge. He's generous with his magic. And, and I've really enjoyed using the deck and, and getting, um, in kind of in, in learning from him and I do learn a lot from him and what he does and a lot of the things that you see here are influenced by this deck and him as a person and magician so the deck has really grown in my magic in lots of different ways um, and I find that relationship invaluable and he's kind of one of the first creators that ever kind of recognized that I was doing anything with their system so I'm I'm especially thankful for that and now he's a patron of our community, so he helps to keep our magic going. And that's nice, too. All right. Ashley. 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 Pay, Ashley. Pay, Ashley. Pay attention. Um, the contemplator. The contemplator. The contemplator. I like saying it as the contemplator. The contemplator helps us contemplate. Um, so this is different. There's a card in here called, there's a servant in here, the thinker. This is a little different than the thinker. The thinker is more about rational thought. The contemplator is about meditative thought, right? This is a place for you to seriously, meditatively contemplate what's going on. So Ashley, where your life is right now, I get the sense, like even from the card, this sense of swirling around you the contemplator is going to help kind of hone that down a little bit, narrow your focus, and allow you the strength and power to seriously contemplate the situations that you're in. And I think that's what you need to do. You've probably even been saying to yourself, if I could just get time to think about it, I would. Well, the contemplator can help carve that out. So... The contemplator, the contemplator. Your BFFs, I say partners in crime, Patty. <laughs> the, uh... All right, this brings us to Shayla. All right, Shayla. Here we go. The saint. Shayla, the saint. So, Shayla. The saint, again, is a servant that helps us access experts. So if you've been in this kind of do-it-yourself, figure-it-out-for-yourself kind of routine, this is the time, Shayla, for you to seek an expert. Who should that expert be? The saint can help us figure that out. So the saint can connect us to our higher power and higher self, most certainly, but the saint can also connect us to other servants and other things and other experts and other areas that we need in our life. So I think for you, Shayla, I think this is really more about someone to speak to. And I think you know what that means. It's kind of the mental, spiritual, emotional health of Shayla. The saint's going to help you kind of find that place. You're welcome, Ashley. It's my pleasure. So that was quick and, that was quick and dirty, Shayla. All right, Beverly Lee. This is you. We're just going to read everybody that's on the list, friends, because it's Samhain, it's Halloween, it's the birthday. We're just going to rock it all the way on through. I'm high energy, took, had a little bit of candy, and <laughs> we'll just keep going. All right, friends. Beverly Lee, this one's for you, the dancer. I love the dancer as a card, and it's a servant that 
um, a servant that I think we don't activate, I don't activate maybe as much as I should. Um, but the servant is, this particular servant, she is about um, <clears throat> helping us dance better, right? The, but really, I think you get a sense of the rain shooting down. You can get a sense for the sigil um, that the servant really is about kind of getting back up when you fall and, and making that look graceful, right? This servant is about being graceful in that stumbling, being graceful in those hard times. It's really kind of, it really is about being a dancer. It really is about kind of rolling with things and moving things along and not and getting back up when we've been knocked around. And so Beverly Lee, for you right now, I feel like you especially need to hear that, that not only are you capable of getting back up, but you're capable of getting back up gracefully and beautifully and in a way that people will look upon and admire. So, the dancer. We've gotten a lot of fun servants. Robin K, it's up for you now. It's Robin K, Lori, Melanie, Jennifer K, Linda, and Crystal after that, friends. Hey, Kat. Kat apparently feels, Ashley, that that message was important for you. All right, Robin, here we go. Oh, the fixer. Oh, we're getting serious now, friends. We're getting serious, serious, serious. Abuse the fixer. All right, so here's what I'm going to tell you. The fixer can fix anything. The fixer can fix anything. The fixer can fix anything. But the fixer has a cost, and you don't know what that cost is. And so, Robin, you have come to a place in your life that you cannot fix this thing by yourself. The fixer, as a servant, can fix it but the fixer has a price. For those of you who've watched Breaking Bad, the fixer is Mike. The fixer is Mike, right? Mike swoops in and he fixes everything. He fixes the scene, he fixes the situation, he fixes the money laundering. What's the one thing he doesn't discuss up front? The cost because you just get it done and you pay the cost later. Sometimes the cost is this, sometimes the cost is this. You just gotta be prepared. So I think what the fixer's coming to you, Robin, to talk to you a little bit about is that you've come to a place in your life where um, you are not able to handle the situation by yourself anymore. You need it to be fixed. Um, and so the fixer's gonna fix it. I don't know what the cost is gonna be. No one ever does. Um, you just ask for the fixer's help. You pay the cost. Um, and that's how it works. I've used the fixer. I use them sparingly. I'm always afraid. <laughs> what if the cost is too great, friends? Fixer is good to be used with opposition, too. Um, all right, this brings us to Lori with an I. I shovel them. I shovel them, Lori. <laughs> I shovel them. This happened the other night, too, like three times on Tuesday. The fixer, you just heard the message, same message here. You've come to come to a point in your life and feel like this is around a family situation for you that you can't fix it anymore, that you can't deal with it. You're not going to be able to kind of make progress on it. And so the fixers come to kind of fix it for you. Serious fellow, serious servant. Um, there is a price to pay. We don't know what that is for you, Lori. Um, it's just going to be out there. Hello, Mar uh, Maria Pia. How are you? Thank you. <laughs> well, that's fun, Ashley. And that's the one reason I, you never know what the cost is going to be, Like, and that's right. All right. Melanie. Melanie from our friend from the UK. This one's for you. Oh, Melanie. You have been talking all night about this, and here is your card. You have literally been in the comments talking about this all night. And here it is. Use the messenger to hear your guardians. Use the messenger to hear your angels. Use your messenger to hear your dead. Use the messenger to hear your messages. Right? So that's the messenger. 
Write the sigil down. Put it in the place where you're hearing these things. Putting it in a place where you think these things. Quite literally, and I didn't do it tonight because I was a little rushed, but typically for doing the readings, I will put um, the witch on one hand and the protector on another. If you see me at a show, if you come out and see me in a live show, you should check my wrists. Like you'll be like, turn them over, turn them sons of bitches over. Let me see what you got, buddy. Um, you'll find sigils. I write, I write them on my body. Not as tattoos, but I, but as ink. I just use pen. And some days they wash right off, and I wash pretty much the same way every day. Uh, but some days they stick around. You gotta wonder if I need it for longer days. Um, all right, Jennifer K. This one's for you. The father. Okay, so we saw the mother earlier for Melody. Um, you're welcome, Lori. It's my pleasure. Oh, Christina SN, I'll add you, but you're going to be it. Because I said I was going to read everybody. All right. Now I got to stay up extra late. All right. So that's okay. You can tell why my 8 a.m. is grouchy with me. All right. So the father is the other, is the pairing card of the mother. So the mother was nurturing, love, emotional. The father is less so. Um, the father, Jennifer K., is. A little bit of that father's love, a little bit of that edge, kind of more masculine energy kind of love. It's firmer, it's more forceful, it can be tougher. Um, the father can very much be like, um, the father can very much be the card we use to kind of let things go, like you got to deal with this on your own and figure it out. But I think the father is best used when it's used as that kind of direct wisdom direct guidance, direct concern. I'm not going to be worried necessarily about your feelings. I'm going to tell you what you need to do, right? That's kind of the masculine energy around the father. Fairly serious but loving fellow, um, but um, the father, this is the father's sigil. There's a little dot. Um, it's like a backwards cue with a dot, um, but that's what the father is. So Jennifer, I think for you, maybe the the, the servant comes to you more as kind of a way to cut through the bullshit, kind of get in right to the meat of the matter. I think you need to have some direct guidance. You can also use the father to help you deal with the situation with someone where you need to kind of let them do it on their own, um, even if there's a cost to pay for that. All right, Linda L., also one of our patrons. Thank you very much. Ooh, Linda. Whew. Here we go. Two carnals in a night. You know, friends, we can read the 40 Servants on a Tarot Tuesday and not get any carnals. And tonight we're getting two. It must be all the jack-o'-lanterns that are out there getting everybody in the mood. All right, so Linda, for you, the physicality of, of intimacy, right? This is sex. This is sexuality. This is kind of getting your groove on or back, right? So we use the carnal for that purpose. This isn't love, right? This isn't this isn't sweet. This isn't like this isn't romance necessarily, unless that romance is a ruse to get to the bedroom, right? This is about sex. That's what the carnal is. It is the physical expression of love or lust and that's kind of what you need right now right you just kind of need to you know maybe just get your head clear a little bit just kind of you know it doesn't need to be fancy it doesn't need to be doesn't need to be any of those things it just needs to be this maybe you got some issues to work through and that's just going to help you work through it but that's what the carnal's for kind of getting back your mojo all right so hopefully that makes sense for you linda good for you congratulations on that you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, Jennifer K. You're welcome, Christina SN. <laughs> All right, Spring brings us to Crystal, then Christina SN. All right, Crystal, this one's for you. I'm going to give you one more shuffle. I'll give you one more shuffle. All right. All right, friends, one more shuffle here, Crystal. The protester. I love the protester. Crystal, the protester is about being the voice for the voiceless. 
Um, you might think that the protester is being an advocate for yourself, but in very that's not necessarily the case. The protester is about being a voice for the voiceless. It's about advocating for the oppressed. It's about advocating for things that are wrong, or rather advocating for the right thing when the situation is wrong. So Crystal, for you, maybe you've just been a cheerleader, or maybe you've been an advocate this week, or you need to be, but the protester helps us with this. The protester helps us to find the message, find the voice of the other person. So similar to the messenger, also similar to the other card that's in there called the media, um, which is about your message, right? But this is the message of others, right? So this is this is about you kind of being an advocate for some for for righting wrongs, for being the voice of the voiceless, and so this can be used really well with um, charity work, really well with giving to others, really well for kind of um, standing up for your kids against someone, or standing up to a system of uh, standing up to a system in the face of your family. The protester gives us strength to kind of fight kind of fight the man, save the empire kind of thing. Damn the man, save the empire. <laughs> You're welcome, Linda. <laughs> well, Linda, they say when you're hot, you're hot, and that's what the Carl's for. <laughs> All right, this brings us to Christina SN. All right, friends, um, stick around after this ring. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to activate your servant uh, for the night and then how to how to do some other things around it. Uh, but before we get to Christina SN's reading, um, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to the show and you had a lot of fun with this, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of that fun. Um, like and follow the page. Uh, make sure you know when there's alerts. We do tarot readings every single Tuesday. Um, there's probably going to be a Tuesday here in November where I'm not going to do one because I'm traveling, uh, but we don't have to do that right now. Um, find me on Instagram and YouTube. And if you're so inclined and you're, and you're feeling like you can, um, consider being a patron, um, on Patreon, there will still be a Friday, $5 Friday tomorrow. I can't wait for you to see it. It's launching at 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun with it. Let's talk to Christina SN, who has some obstacles to deal with in her life. Uh, the road opener, hands down, the most used servant in my magic system, the road opener. The road opener clears obstacles out of your path, Christina SN. The road opener, amazing for job interviews, amazing for travel, amazing for making progress on a project amazing in fact i'm going to write the road opener down because i need the road opener tomorrow all right so there it is there it is the road opener and while i'm at it i'm just going to turn on the gatekeeper there's the gatekeeper all right so for you right now christina sm you're probably facing some obstacles and you don't know how to get around them the road opener so um, so that's what's going on for you. You just need me to get these kind of obstacles out of your path. The road opener is the way to do that. Um, and we use the servant for just that purpose. All right, friends, so let's talk a little bit about how do we activate the road opener in our life um, and what do we do um, with the road opener or what do we do with the servants in our life? So the first thing I'll tell you is that if you are serious about this system and you are interested in it, this is the time to get into the system. Um, not only are they on special because it's the servant's birthday, they were launched on Halloween several years ago, uh, but also because the game crafter who manufactures them uh, has increased the quality of the card. So super good reason to get in. Um, the other thing that you um, the other thing that you need to know is that you don't have to have the deck to use the system to use the sigils. Um, that's part of the beauty of all this. It's part of what I love about all this. So how you activate the servants is quite simply by saying servant like this. There's if you buy the grimoire, um, there's a there's sayings in it and how you do this. But you legitimately can just say, 
you know, I set your intentions just like I just did. I just said, I need the road opener. I need the gatekeeper. I legitimately just said a silent little meditation in my head, you know, road opener. I need your help with this situation. Please help me with this gatekeeper. I need your help with this situation. Please help me with this. I just, just legitimately had a thought. You can say it out loud. You can say it to yourself. You can write it down, paint it in the sky, whatever you need to do to get it done. Use the sigil to activate the servant. It's like a key that unlocks the servant. Write it down on paper, write it down on your skin, whatever it might be, right? So that's what I would recommend. When the magic has happened, when the thing has done, give thanks to the servant publicly. So there's a Facebook group that's linked to our doctor, or linked to the gathering. It's the 40 servants group. Um, it is an amazing place to thank the servants and an amazing place to learn more about it. I strongly encourage you to get involved um, with the 40 servants group and see what the system's about. Um, do your thanking there. But people give thanks on Instagram and they give thanks on Twitter and they give thanks just openly and say thank you. And that's fine too. Uh, but the servants are fed on our thanks, fed on our appreciation, fed on um, our ability to use them. That was how they were designed. Um, so that's your lesson on the 40 servants, my friends. And that brings us to the end of our very special, um, very special Halloween Samhain special um, show. Thank you so much for joining me. I was been excited about this for days. Um, if you're on Patreon, you knew it was coming. Um, so thank you so much for joining me on Halloween and sharing in the 40 servants and my happiness with them. That means a lot to me. Oops, you're seeing a little bit. I might have plain jammies, but you know. I got a little I got a little bit of fire in my life. All right, friends. So um so thank you so much for joining me on Halloween. Thank you so much for joining me on Sawin. Uh thank you so much for joining me on the birthday of the 40 servants and enduring my endless uh commercials for the system. Um I appreciate that. Um like, follow, subscribe to me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Support the show um, by being through Patreon or through $5 Friday. Tomorrow's $5 Friday, off the chain. It is about picking the right candy from your kids, my friends. Whatever could I be up to? You'll see it in about half an hour. You'll see it the first post and then again tomorrow. So um, so thank you, friends. Um, have an enjoyable, wonderful rest of your Samhain. Uh, blessed be. Uh, and we'll see you on the next show on Tuesday. Angels, friends. Angels. All right. We'll see you soon.